welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay Ner Chuck. And this, my friends, oh, this is the Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And today we are focusing on some wines that I think excite me. And I'm gonna tell you why. These first three wines, absolutely in my opinion, are some of the most widely available wines I've ever done on Wine Library TV. Anywhere you are, you should probably be able to find one of these three wines. And the category as a whole that we're focusing on, thanks John from Cincinnati for that email a couple hours ago that got me to think of it, is Chilean Cabernets. People love the cab, but the California prices continue to escalate. Um, finding really great California cab between eight and $15 has become extremely difficult. And, um, and Chile has always had this reputation of bringing thunder uh, at a lower price point. Though I must say, when Chile was having its golden age seven to 10 years ago, um, and everybody's all about Chile, like, oh, the Chilean wines are so good. You know, uh, Consumer Reports did a big uh, article on the value of them, so that swayed everybody to believe that. I was never such a big fan. I actually thought that there was a lot of other values around Portugal and South Africa that were better. To this day, I still believe that, though Casablanca, has really, really um, come on the scene. It's a region within Chile that is producing immense, awesome Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir. And so, um, speaking of Chilean uh, Sauvignon Blanc, I'm about to tape another video for the Wine Library side in a minute, Mon. So don't don't run away like you always do as soon as we're done. Don't do that for me. Anyway, I'm really excited about this. Uh, there are, are four very interesting little different Cabernets Walnut Crest, which is massively available in the Costco's and the Targets and the Walmarts of the world, so widely available. Santa Rita, Casa La Postel, and uh, a, a wine that I've really loved in the past, Montes Alpha. So I'm excited about trying that as well. That's the 05. So without further ado, Mon, I don't know, you know, nothing's really been going on, so there's nothing else to talk about. Um, let's zoom in. Walnut Crest 2006 Cabernet Sauvignon. Now this wine, my friends, rolls in at six. US dollars, so we're talking about a very good value. And you can see I brought out the big ass glass because you know, just because these wines are a little bit more value driven doesn't mean they deserve any less of glassware. So I love bringing out the big ass glass. Six bones on the walnut crest, widely available. Um, Chile is producing really interesting wines. I'm gonna say it again. I really think that the direction over the next three to five years, what Chile is gonna be known for is, you know, Carmenere, Sauvignon Blanc, and Pinot Noir, believe it. Even though that Merlot Cab and, and Chardonnay have been the front runners for the region for a long time. Walnut Crest, as you guys know, is also available in the Magnum size bottle. So a lot of you drink it in that size. Let's see what's going on. It has some color, we appreciate that. Like dark red, little ruby action. Say it with me, Vaniacs. Let's give this wine a sniffy sniff. Like on the bouquet, I get a very interesting little, like almost like sour cherry meets gasoline that falls on the ground. So it's got a little petrol-y kind of, you know, sour cherry thing going on. I get a little bit of a, a bacon kind of component, like fake bacon. Like my mom the other day, when we were for Mother's Day, we had like bacon, but it was like already made. Like, I don't know, I was just had to put it in the microwave. I don't know, I hated it. It wasn't good. I love bacon mix. That's like better than potato chips. So I get a little bacon fat, I get a little sour cherry, a little forest floor, you know, a little brush on the side of the highway kind of thing going on, but actually a very strong aromatic nose for a $6 wine. So right off the bat, excited. Let's give it a whirl. I love about wine. This is a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. You go in just like, even though I talk about it all the time, don't preconceive, don't pigeonhole. You know, when you see it and you know it, you're gonna have some preconceived notions. And so I am surprised at the balance of this wine, first of all. This wine is not gonna change my life. However, it's got good fruit. The alcohol is not out of control, which happens a lot of times under these under $8 wines. Um, it's got some nice little subtle sour cherry flavors. It's not atrocious. It's actually quite drinkable. I get a little bit of carrot top, not the redhead, the green stuff on top of a carrot, which is not bad. The fruit's pretty pure. I gotta be honest with you, this is not bad at all. 
This is very serviceable picnic summertime wine. If you're a Cabernet fan, there are a boatload of 10 to $12 California and Australian Cabernets that I've drank that are not half as good as this wine. This is a big surprise right off the bat. I'm gonna go 86 plus points of this wine and I'm feeling it. And if you're a CKC, that's the college kid crew, of course 21 and older. And if you're on a budget, and this, you know, I don't know if you heard, a little recession, a little tighter. You know, you're looking for wine, you're drinking wine every night, you're having a little pizza while you watch your Seinfeld reruns. This is a wine that can do it for you at an exceptional price. Not bad, good start. Ma, you should pick up some of that. I think you like it. Yeah, you wanna try it? I'll get it for the wife. Got it, nice move. Santa Rita for the wife. Santa Rita, 120 Cabernet Sauvignon, 2006 vintage. Um, 89 points, wine and spirits for a $6 wine. So, you know, kind of dissed on Chilean cabs a little bit when I started the show, and if this one brings thunder, then it's already one of the more successful shows we've had. I mean, two wines at this price point showing, I can't win, right? I hype up other categories and the shit wines stink. Let's see what's going on here. Again, similar color, uh, you know, dark ruby. You can see your fingers through it, meaning it's not pitch black or purple. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Now this one smells a little bit more like oregano on the nose, which is kind of neat. I get a little bit more of a blackberry and really ripping cassis, like pure cassis coming through. Quite a bit. Uh, it smells a little oakier, a little cedar box. Um, getting a hint of that tobacco, very Cabernet-like. But the cassis and the smokiness, like burnt garbage, like they do in the hills of like Italy, and you're like, oh my God, they burn garbage out here? They do. So that's what this smells like a little bit. I'm definitely getting the smokiness of like, you know, in the hills, they're, they're cooking up their garbage. And the cassis is very obvious, like really, really high on the cassis. Let's give it a whirl. <laughs> little oak monster um, on the tail end. Um, tastes like black olives, which is something I like quite a bit, so that's a good start. But it also tastes a little fakey fake, a little artificial flavor coming through. More like a fruit punch than a wine. Um, it's not over the top Australian-like, uh, as I talk about like over extracted or California-like. I don't want to pick on the Aussies on this one. Um, this is kind of very basic, kind of boring, bland. Um, similar to the Walnut Crest, except the Walnut Crest really surprised me. I'm gonna go back to it for a quick second because I just, I almost want to confirm for myself. A rinse. Um, the difference between Santa Rita and the Walnut Crest is yeah, it's a choke away. The Walnut Crest has a little bit more earthiness and trueness. It tastes more like Bordeaux to me. Um, whereas the 120 has more of like a Shiraz Australian kind of motion to it. And I don't know, just kind of doesn't sing to me. It's kind of bland, kind of boring, almost feels like sugarfied. Um, Cabernet, I'm gonna give the wine 78 points and give it a pass. I'm not on the same boat with Wine and Spirits Magazine on this, giving it an 89 point score is just not what I believe and this is a great little segue too. We all have different palettes. You know, listen, I'm stunned that I like the Walnut Crest right now. I've had it in the past and hated it, it's, but that's a different vintage, right? Wines change, your palate changes. So remember, going back to things that you don't think you like or things that you've, you know, you can't have two Chardonnays in your life and say, I hate Chardonnay. So always explore, always push the boundaries, try different things, but most of all, trust yourself. Just because I said it's awesome or it stinks doesn't mean it's true for you. Right, Ma? I mean, I like whatchamacallits a heck of a lot more than I like Snickers, right? How about you, Ma? Do you like whatchamacallits? Yeah, I don't like Snickers. You don't, right? Yeah, some, but I like cold ice cream Snickers. The ice cream Snickers are awesome. Casa La Postel, 2006, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, 11 US dollars, but here in New Jersey, there's something weird about Casa La Pastella, and I know this, that in New Jersey, we have a much higher price than the rest of the market. It's a very rare little situation. I, I know it's more like eight or nine dollars around the country, so keep that in mind. Um, definitely don't buy from Wine Library or any other Jersey store. Um, 11 US dollars, I always like number 11 because that's Callan Clemens's number, future Hall of Fame, four-time Super Bowl champion, quarterback of your New York Jets, so we're always loving that. Um, also, a little bit of a nicer color on this wine. Uh, Casa Lopez still really hit the scene in the mid 90s and is a very established, real serious brand from, uh, from Chile. And it's really that step above the wines we just had for a lot of consumers. So I'm excited to see where this one is rolling at. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. 
and right off the top, you can tell that it has a much more interesting aromatic component. To me, this wine is loaded with a plum component that is quite pretty. What is that going on there? A little bit of dirtiness, a little soil, you know, like freshly planted soils. Looks like somebody came over and did yard work. Uh, I'm always down for that. And a really nice plum. So it's a plum meets fertilizer, not like the poopy fertilizer, more like the soil top that you put in when you do some landscaping, like this time of year when it's time to fix up the lawn. Let's give it a whirl. Great red currant flavors, wow. Loaded, I mean like red currant juice, nice body. Definitely has more complexity than the last two wines. Uh, has a more oomph to it. This is a pretty polished little effort for 11 Bones. Not bad at all, has a little oakiness, but good balance. I'm really surprised by the fact that they're able to contain this black fruit, this red cassis, a uh, little bit of strawberry action, little bit of like wood, wood chips, again, I'm very much into the landscaping today. Little wood chip action on the lawn, little soil, very well integrated second and third tier flavors on the palate as I'm yapping. Long finish with some dryness. Reminds me of a lot of $20, $30 Cabernets. So for that, definitely a good play. I get a nice blackberry jam. You know like when it's heated up, when it's real, when you really make blackberry jam? I get a little bit of that. It's a pretty good effort. It's a little over oaked for me, just a hair, which is probably means that it's perfect for the majority of people out there. This is quality. I mean, this is something that I can wrap my head around. I'm gonna give this 88 points, and that's a lot of people that, this is another example. This is turning out to be a pretty rad show. I really did not, I, looking at it, I'm like, oh man, this better not be an 0 for 4. Right now we're at 2 for 3 with a $6 recommendation. Um, Unlike the $6 recommendation, this Castle Apostel will appease a lot more people. Whereas the Walnut Crest, I think is very serviceable for school night and pizza. This Castle Apostel, if you're making a nice little meal on a Friday night and you don't wanna break the bank, you pop this sucker at nine, 10, $11. I think you'd be very happy. I'd like to see people go with hanger steak on this. I think for an hour decanting, it can open up even more. This is a pretty quality effort and kudos to Castle Apostel. Nice job. And finally. Montes Alpha, 2005 Cabernet Sauvignon, 16 US dollars, 89 points. Jay Miller, who does the reviewing for Robert Parker's A Wine Advocate these days, uh, doing Spain and Australia and South America and many other things. Um, little rinse, little pour. Just wanted to show off their mind. You saw that? It was pretty rad, right? Swirly, sniffy sniff. Now this smells like the inside of a balloon, if that makes any sense to you. Wild, it actually smells like like a little bit like laughing gas. Uh, inside of the balloon, I get a little like rubber glove, like the inside of a rubber glove. Very awkward kind of like medicine-y kind of thing going on in the nose. I also get a very solid sense of black cherry coming through. Black raspberry, which we discovered on episode 148, and I've been using a lot now. It's another great reason to taste exotic fruits. You start picking up on things. But I'm having a little, you know, definitely vanilla and oak. I'm a little bit worried that the oak monster might come out again, and this time, instead of a little growl that we had before, the uh, this one might be like, he might swipe at my face. So I'm a little concerned. Let's give it a whirl. He's swiping at my face. He's swiping at my face. This wine is loaded with oak. I feel like Hacksaw Jim Duggan just stuck his two by four directly in my mouth and I don't appreciate it. There is some dark fruit. There is, <laughs> there's some things going on but this oak is lasting. I get a little vanilla which always comes with the oak treatment. Yeah, there's, there's oak in here. There's oak in here. <laughs> um, there is a little bit of a second tier cherry juice flavor that is, I find kind of charismatic and, and kind of interesting, but the oak is overpowering that. And here, my friends, is when the balance comes off. And when you don't have balance in wine and in life, you've got a problem. And this does not exhibit balance to me in any shape or form. Um, 
there is some nice polish, it's got a decent weight. I think the Casa La Postella is just a far better version of what this is trying to be for, oh, you like that mod, huh? We gotta play that slow-mo, I wanna see my face. For, a, you, know, a you know, a third of the price, um, just jump right into it one more time. It's the back end, it's dry, it's the back end oak that's really bothering me because in the beginning this chocolate covered strawberry thing that it's got going on is kind of pleasant but it just ruins it. It's like a really good book or a really good movie that like the, the ending just is, you're like, are you serious? That's what this wine is. I'm gonna score this wine 84 points and I'm gonna give it a pass with four, no that's eight, eight Z's. Do not and do. Here are the do's, here are the do nots. Enjoy and again, that's only my opinion. Now, last Friday I did a little thing on the couch where I kind of chilled and you notice I didn't do a lot of talking in the beginning. I'm playing around with a little bit of a different format where I do the shout outs at the end and talk about the things that are going on and I was thinking like, it'd be fun, you know, like you pour your favorite wine from the episode and kind of hang out with you guys. So I hope you enjoy this format. I'd love to hear back from you. Lurkers, I'm looking for you. Tens of thousands of people watching that don't leave a comment. Never have. Mott's got your IP address. He can do things with that, Mott. Dangerous things? Oh, you all from a, a wristband boy that got out. <laughs> oh yeah, poor Mott's e inbox exploded because we offered 10 free uh, wristbands. You got hammered, huh? Um, so what do I want to talk about? One, thank you everybody who came to New York and New Jersey uh, book signings. That was amazing. It's, I mean, you want to talk about an experience. Having a book signing is surreal, especially for a nice little immigrant boy from Russia. Thank you so much. I, I can't thank you enough. Speaking of which, Mott, link it up. We should make a t-shirt for that, shouldn't we? <laughs> Link it up, uh, we've added more dates. Maryland, Cleveland, Ohio, um, Edison, New Jersey, my, own, my old stomping grounds. Portland and Seattle are set. So, if you wanna check me out on a book tour, Mott is gonna link it up right now. Um, that is awfully exciting. We're hitting a bunch more cities. And remember, we're at the tail end now. We did the whole thing in the forum. If you wanna push for me to come to your city, Mott, link that up as well. We're wrapping up. It looks like North Carolina is gonna be confirmed. There's a couple other places in play. Um, we're working on that. I have a crap load of shout outs to give. So I'm gonna go right into it. This is absurd. I just want the papers. I don't want the paper. I wanna read it like I do it. Bonnie DeLott, happy birthday. Happy birthday. I might need the paper. No, happy birthday John from Melody, who John came to the book signing and to the Conan O'Brien taping. I mean, not taping, uh, viewing party. By the way, 70 people showed up in New York City at one o'clock in the morning to watch, on a Monday night, to watch Conan O'Brien with me. I appreciate everybody that came to Bounce. You wanna talk about be humbled. I mean, I don't know if I would do that for even like my favorite Jets player, so that was amazing. Thank you so much. Ross Michaels graduates from medical school. The medical school thing after we had the guests is big. Um, John Smith gives you that shout out. Dave Yeti Adams, happy birthday. Edward Sherman, happy birthday. Gobi, he's mad. He's mad that Panama gets all the love. I always mention how many fans there are in Panama. I know, Gobi. There's a ton in Costa Rica, too. I apologize. I love Costa Rica. Lizzie and I went there once. It was surreal. Great vacation. Brian and Dan Cachel's wet. Oh, no. And, is it Brian and Dan? It could be Brian. I don't know. That's what I wrote. Brian and Dan Cachel's wedding is on the 17th. Jonathan Yoke Kim's 18th birthday is on the 17th. Sacramento Charles' wife, Krista, she's 30 something on the 17th. Brandon Jones graduates from medical school as well. Congratulations to you. I really feel like the, you know, like, the, this has gotten crazy, right? Like, we're going to have to create a website for all these demands. Like, the, uh, who was that guy? Warner Wolf? Warner Wolf. Remember he used to do that? That's who I feel like right now. Um, Christine Weber, happy 43rd birthday. Big shout out to her for giving her number, right? That's how you need to roll, Mott. That's, that's transparency, that's where the world's going. I love it, I'm glad she did that. I'm glad we ended with her. Other than that, um, looking to chat some stuff up. You know what I'd love to do? Um, I've pre-taped a lot of episodes. If you don't know, I'm gonna let you know right now, I've taped some awesome episodes for next week, but finally, the time has come, Lizzie and I are taking a vacation. So I'm gonna be gone. You know, you're gonna get the autoresponder email. Don't fret, Ma can take care of you, Matt, Brandon. I'll probably be looking at them too, but don't tell Lizzie, all right? Um, and so I'm looking forward to that. Um, by the way, everybody who's reviewed the book on Amazon right now, thank you so much. I, hey, I don't know if you know this, Ma, we're eight for eight with five stars. Though I honestly believe we're a four star book. But I appreciate the love, Vader X. Um, question of the day. I'm really curious 
where the mindset of the wine drinker in this country is. So this is where you can really help me. Tell me the biggest thing that you're surprised about with wine in the last month. What's the biggest thing that shocks you about vino? Because, ooh, I almost went there without linking up. Did you see what Colin did? Made that website with all my TV appearances. So if you missed any, the Donnie Deutsch, the Mad Money, the Conan, if you missed any of the television appearances, ma, link it up. We've got a link down below from my good friend Colin who uh, put them all in one place. Because you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not.